Hey guys, welcome to this new tutorial series, uh, Creative for World of Level Design. We'll be going into visual scripting inside of the Unreal Development Kit, uh, and that is using Kismet. If you've not been on World of Level Design uh, yet, it's on. you can find it on worldoflevelesign.com and uh, there's lots of excellent resources and tutorials here already uh, for becoming a better level designer or environment artist. Uh, my name is Pete Bottomlip and I'm the co-founder and technical designer over at White Paper Games. You can find us on whitepapergames.com and uh, yeah, that, let's get stuck in. So first thing we need to know is how to actually get to Kismet and open it. So you'll find it at the top of your brow uh, browser tab here uh, or under Unreal Development Kit. So if we just click this and bring it up, uh, we're presented with uh, a blank box, uh, just grey space, nothing in here yet. Uh, if you try opening up some other Unreal Tournament examples or any maps provided with the Unreal Development Kit, you'll find lots of different uh, scripting in here and you can, you can break it down into uh, events and nodes and kind of check out what's going on here. So what is Kismet? Well, Kismet is uh, the powerful tool that can create gameplay uh, through visual scripting rather than the code that you'll find uh, in some engines. Uh, it's an easy way to quickly prototype game designs and uh, we'll just go about how, how we go about creating it now. So you start off with uh, four main things. You've got events here, you've got actions, you have got conditions, and you've also got variables. And let's just see which what each of these does. So an event is something that can trigger off a set of uh, actions. So for example, you walk through a door, then something happens, or you, you place a key, then something else will happen. Uh, an action is what happens after this event. So first you get the event, and then the action. As you can see, the events have only got the outputs going in, uh, and then the actions have also got inputs that allow you to connect into them, and also outputs that allow you to go into something else. Uh, and then you've got conditions, which, uh, if you know maths and stuff like that, you'll you'll find these in here a lot, like if statements and stuff like that. So basically, these are just comparing two values and and giving you a, a result from them. Uh, we will be going into these in more depth, uh, so don't worry if you don't quite understand that. And and then variables are they they store any kind of values. So this variable could be a door, or it could be a player, or it could be a light in the level. And then we can uh, get these actions to kind of talk to these variables and just say so maybe this this might be um, bot number one um, spawning from an actor factory, just for example. So I mean maybe you could find this type of setup in Kismet. Um, and just comparing this would like load a level and then uh, spawn an actor and then compare uh, something after that. Uh, of course that example doesn't really do much at, at the moment but uh, we can go into creating a quick setup and really show you what these uh, nodes can be capable of. So to really drive home how powerful Kismet can be uh, we'll set up a little example here uh, just using a few few uh, nodes and actors uh, just to create a basic uh, gameplay camera. So first of all, uh, if you go to your content browser, uh, which is hiding behind my Kismet window at the moment, and then go to your actor classes, in uh, common you'll find camera actor. And then we can just drag this into our scene, or you can right click and add camera from here. Uh, the good thing about cameras is we can actually look through the lens and position it where we would like to go. So if you have your camera selected and press the little uh, eye, eye ta uh, tab on the top of your browser and wherever you move now, um, say we want to position this just behind a player start, maybe a bit above, uh, and then if we click off this eye again, uh, the camera will be positioned there. Always make sure that if you are using the eye to turn it off after you've selected an actor, otherwise you can find things quickly, quickly getting out of hand with uh, moving actors into the sky and stuff like that. So our camera's in position now, and that's pretty much all we need for this example. Uh, so we'll dive into Kismet. So making sure we have our camera selected in the viewport, we'll open up Kismet, and just make this a bit bigger for you to see. So. Um, actually, one, one thing before we get started, I'll create an event inside of our scene so that we can trigger this off from some kind of event. So I'll right click on the floor here, um, uh, go to add actor, 
and go to add trigger okay and then we can just pull this out the floor a bit we'll change some of its properties just by pressing F4 I'll change the collision height uh, to make it a bit bigger just so it's a bit easier to use and I'll also change the display from hidden um, to unhidden um, so that will make it easier for uh, debugging uh, okay so we'll go back into Kismet uh, we have our trigger selected in here uh, we can just right click in Kismet now and go to new event using trigger zero and we'll just do it as a touch event for now okay so just right clicking in the empty space new event using trigger um, touch it doesn't matter if it says trigger one two three four just as long as you have the appropriate trigger selected uh, that'll create an event for that okay next off we need to um, be able to assign this camera to this player okay so the way we do that is we create uh, an action now uh, which will be uh, a set camera target action so if we just go to new action camera um, set camera target and then we'll just click on that and so we put the output from touch to the input and what this is saying is as soon as we touch this trigger as soon as we go inside this green radius here tell something to happen and in this case it's a set camera target which will be set this target to something okay so our camera target will be this camera so if we just right click on this purple tab here uh, and create a new object by using camera actor zero and that way it attaches straight to there the other way of doing it is just to have it selected uh, and right click here and new object using camera actor and then we can just click and drag over to there like that okay our target will be this player uh, in, in Kismet we don't know what this player is called so there is a variable for just the player in the scene which is by holding down P on your keyboard and left clicking I'm going to left click over this tab so it automatically connects it um, so that's uh, down there and we can move these nodes around by holding down control and left clicking uh, around there so that you can uh, kind of position it a little bit better um, one thing I do normally change is in your uh, properties tab when you have this variable selected there's an all players tab um, depending if you if you want all players to be able to interact with that sometimes you may want to turn that off and player zero is just the default player that uh, spawns for you but if, if you're not bothered about who touches it you can just leave it as all players for default Right, so looking at this setup, what we have is we have this touch trigger here. So when we touch this, we set a camera target, which is this camera, to target the player, which is this player here. Okay, um, one thing we can do as well is attach this camera to this player so that wherever they run, the camera will follow them. Okay, so by doing that, we create a new action again by right clicking, new action actor attach to actor okay and with that attach to actor selected we'll just click and drag the output into the input there our target will again be the player so we can just click and drag that output into the player and then the attachment will be the camera so attach to actor who are we looking for we're looking for the player the attachment will be the camera okay and just one thing before we quickly test this out, I'm just going to go to View, World Properties. And if you're using a newer version of the Unreal Development Kit, you'll have all these um, preloaded templates and um, different game types, okay? I'm just going to use UT Game for now, just so that we have uh, a mesh in the scene, a, a, a player mesh uh, with a gun and stuff like that. Now, you don't have to do that, but it's much easier to see in this example. So if I, if I play this game now, I can run into here and I can see my trigger there. So when I run over it to this trigger, it should attach a camera to my player. So now we've got a camera attached to the player. And so this can be used for any kind of third person, top down game. Say we wanted to position the camera above the player uh, or even by its side. Uh, we, we can do this pretty quickly. Uh, in Kismet. 
Of course, uh, this is just for quickly prototyping, so you would want to hardline these type of cameras in cold later on. But just for a simple prototype kind of game, uh, it's, it's a really easy way to do it. Uh, a couple of things you can change in the set camera target properties, uh, if we just drag up these prop the property tab here, is we can, um, on the attached actor, sorry, uh, we can change uh, relative offset and stuff like that. So say our camera was too far behind the player, I could maybe change this to minus 50, and therefore when I play the game, it should zoom in uh, a little bit closer to the player. And this just allows you to um, tweak, uh, tweak the gameplay, and that didn't change there because I've not ticked relative offset, so I'll make sure you tick use relative offset, and that should uh, theoretically uh, put the camera closer to the player. So yeah, as you can see, uh, we've got the camera a little bit closer now. Uh, we don't want to be staring at this uh, robot's legs, so maybe we want to kind of change the Z elevation to 30, and the Z in UDK, as you know, is the vertical axis. So with 30 in there, it should lift it just above the player, and there we go. And we can keep quickly tweaking these variables until we're happy with um, you know, whatever camera type you want. Uh, so that's just a quick, easy demonstration of how you would use uh, an event and an action inside a Kismet, you know, setting up your own player camera. Just have a play around with different camera angles. Maybe you'd want to set the camera so that, you know, it's above the player. You could quickly get uh, a top-down um, shooter right there. So just have a play around uh, with different things. And I'll just reset this here. And yeah, just have a play around with different examples and, and see what kind of stuff you can come up with. Uh, it allows you to quickly change your kind of gameplay in, from the default first person Unreal. Uh, obviously the, the crosshairs and stuff don't actually update with this, uh, but just see what you can do. So now that we've done a quick demonstration on how to use Kismet, uh, it would be a good time now to mention how to organize your work so that things don't start getting messy because as you can imagine, uh, if this is just a quick um, a camera set target, uh, things can get out of control pretty quickly when you have lots of different events going on on your screen. So one way to do that is to control, hold Control and Alt on your keyboard and left mouse drag around an area and this will create a selection box which you can highlight uh, multiple nodes in Kismet by. So just hold Control Alt, left mouse click, drag even, and you can select all your nodes there. And if you just press C on your keyboard, a comment box will come up and I can just press set camera uh, target and that'll name the sequence uh, so we can easily find it. There are a few properties you can change on these boxes. You can uh, change the fill colors if you wish to do so. Uh, you can change the border thicknesses. Maybe it's an important piece of kismet that you know you want to draw people's attentions to. Uh, you can easily do that. I don't really use it too much, um, but there, those options are there for you if you wish to change it. Um, so if you want to know more about the actual layout of kismet, you can find these pages on the UDN. Uh, if you just type in UDN Kismet or U Kismet User Guide, you can quickly find these. And this will go into all the areas inside Kismet and exactly watch what each bit does. Uh, you can also find a Kismet, uh, Unreal Kismet reference, which lists every single act, um, action and event, uh, as long as variables in there. Uh, so you can really find out what each one does just in case you get stuck. But uh, just for now, uh, we'll, we'll leave it there.